Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Runaway Guys Coliseum. This time, it's Stephen's Tabletop Mystery. But it's a mystery no longer because it is The Extraordinary Adventures of Baron Munchausen, which is an improv storytelling game. And uh, this first round is going to be composed of Josh, Tyler, Tom, and myself. Uh, it is the 18th century, or sometime close to it. Um, historical and scientific uh, accuracy aren't really that important to this game. The four of us are extraordinary adventurers. We've traveled the world, we've done all sorts of incredible things, and we've met up at a pub to talk about our astounding adventures. <laughs> Tyler is having water. <laughs> so the four of us are, are talking about these adventures, and uh, each of us are going to turn to the, the person next to us and say, well, tell me about the time you did this. And those times were written by you, so we have no idea what it is you're going to tell us to do, but we're suddenly going to have to roll with it and tell a story that you came up with. Now, while we are telling this story, the other participants can interject. They can actually interrupt our story, and they can say, well, wait, what about this? How did this happen? It is then up to the storyteller to incorporate that into their story. If they do successfully, they get to spray the challenger in the face with water. If they don't, then the challenger gets to spray them in the face with water. And we're, and we're, we're, we're gonna see if we, can, if we can make this work. We've all come up with some really amazing names. I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna start by introducing myself. I'm Lord Bunyan of Scooterville. Uh, <laughs> I'm worried about this one, but go ahead, Tyler. Hello, my name's Brazer, and I am from the Polish dynasty. Red mic. <laughs> we good? Okay. Hello there, my name is Reginald Isaac Benjamin Clark Alexander Gerald Edwards, but most people refer to me by my initials. R rib, rib cage. <laughs> rib cage. Oh, I love it. Hi, I'm Bup. <laughs> Josh, would you like to ask me uh, about my fantastic adventures? I would love to. I would love to, Stephen. Uh, Zodoman donated twenty-five dollars for Zodeman. this message. Zodoman, um, <laughs> he says, "How did you manage to ward off those witches using only a dead chicken and a fishing rod, Stephen?" Oh goodness, that's a great tale. I would love ah, to. Ah, the de the dead witches with the. I remember very clearly fishing the rod. fishing rod. <laughs> the fishing. What was the other thing that I used? Dead chicken. Dead chicken and the fish to, to ward, ward off, off the witches. The witches. Yes, that is a witches. Yes, yes, and it was witches because there were in fact three. This was just a few years ago. I was. No, wait, um, wait, wait. If I remember correctly, there was actually three hundred witches. <laughs> <laughs> Water bottle. <laughs> you know, memory has not been super kind to me, but you're absolutely right. There were th <laughs> there were three hundred witches, Brasser. Yes, <laughs> yes, there were three hundred witches, and that's actually a tale in and of itself. You see, I had just attended the witch convention, <laughs> uh, the witch convention of Canterbury, and um, you know, I, I thought that I had been friendly to the witches. But uh, in fact, I had used a word that was only usable by witches, for witches, and that got me in a, in a great heaping help of trouble. So um, as I was escaping... Well, wait a minute, Lord Bunyan. Oh, God, yes. Didn't, uh, didn't all these woes come to play because you tried to seduce as many as you could at that convention? <laughs> <laughs> That's slight hearsay, <laughs> as it was only ten. At one time. There were a few oh others. My. There were a few <laughs> others. And I must, I must tell you, I must tell you, Ribcage, uh, it was uh, the, the ten that I was going for. They were um, less witchy. Less witchy than the others. Uh, the one, um, Florence, which was, uh, which was her name, she was the leader of the, of the witches. And uh, she, was, she was a wonderful, wonderful woman 
creature. <laughs> anyway, after I had uh, after I had used this this terrible word, and they were chasing me out of the convention, um, I ran by a, a nearby farm, and uh, while I was while I was at the farm, I noticed a man who was standing there fishing on a dock. So I ran up to him and I said, "Sir, I have a bit of an issue." If you hear that stampede behind me, that happens to be 300 angry witches. <laughs> You've ever heard the sound of witches? They're, they're, not, very, they're not very happy folk. They're cackly. <laughs> <laughs> they cackle a lot. <laughs> so after, after reasoning with this man, I was able to grab his fishing rod. Now, hold on a minute. I, oh. think, we, I think we need some more detail here, because wasn't that his, his great-great-great-grandfather's fishing rod, and he had no intention of parting with it at all for whatever reason whatsoever. Yes! <laughs> yes, that man was in fact a famous fisherman, John McFisher. <laughs> and it was his grandfather, John McFisher, older John <laughs> McFisher, senior. John McFisher, older. John McFisher, senior, who had won the, the biggest fishing competition in all the land just 10 years prior. I had to reason with him. I had to say, I also enjoy fishing. Fishing for men. <laughs> for I am a servant of the Lord, and it would be a terrible travesty for you not to hand over that fishing rod right now. <laughs> Don't question this. This part of the story is very true. So he said, I understand. I also am a holy man. He gave me the fishing rod, <laughs> at about which time, the witches were approaching. They, they gathered around me, including Florence, who was very angry about what I had said and also what I had done to her sister. So as they were all standing around, I said, wait, what's that there on the ground? And they all turned around. I cast my fishing rod, grabbed onto a chicken by the neck, <laughs> pulled it into the crowd, and as it died, it laid in a pool of blood around the witches, and the witches looked and said, that is our one weakness, because it is a well-known fact. Which fact? They hate dead chickens. And it was in that moment, they all said, we apologize, have a wonderful day, <laughs> and they left me in peace from that moment forward. Now hold on a second, what was the word? <laughs> Witchy bitchies. <laughs> and that, that, that is, that is my, my story. Thank you very much. Oh. Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. But you forgot to leave out the, the part about all of this, about how you now own the corporation Witch Witch Sandwiches. <laughs> we were talking about Witch Witch earlier. <laughs> Me and Florence got back together. We've been happily married by for 32 way, years. We started Witch Witch. By the way, that, that convention of witches is called WitchCon. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, Bump. From Berlin uh, for $25, how did you manage to escape the Tower of London using only a Gutenberg printing press? <laughs> oh, wow. Well, <laughs> wow, that was, well, first of all, it's a tall tale. <laughs> we'll just we'll start there. Um, the Tower of what now? <laughs> London. The, the Tower of London. The Tower of London with a printing press. Uh, well, first of all, it was very difficult to move that printing press all the way to the top of the tower. But by the time I got there... Uh, Am I escaping from the tower or getting in? <laughs> I've already forgotten the entire prompt. As, as, as I recall it, Bup, uh, you were first trying to get the printing press into the tower to show it off to the mayor? Is that... I believe that's Yes, the mayor of I London. I believe it's what you typed using the printing press that made everybody so angry in the first place. Yeah, I typed a letter to the us. president of the United States. Wait, who am I? Here, go ahead. I wrote a letter to the president of the United States at the time uh, <laughs> requesting that he send armed forces to London to help me remove the printing press from the Tower of London. Unfortunately, the mayor of London got upset that I contacted the United States instead of the Prime Minister of England. Which, yes. <laughs> what country is London in again? Yes. Hang on. Yes. Sorry, England. England is my city. <laughs> <laughs> so he got upset, and so, uh, man, uh, I'm talking him into 
talking him into sending. The, the, <laughs> I tried to talk to talk him into sending the. Oh, I can't remember the. <laughs> You were talking. You were talking. The English pres- guard, maybe. Yes, thank you. <laughs> With the fuzzy hats, those guys. <laughs> they helped me come and, and and pick up the printing press. I don't know why I'm picking it up instead of just. You were escaping the tower with it, but that was because the tower caught on fire. I recall. I was I was standing nearby, at a, at a nearby witch witch <laughs> that me and my wife had had recently started. And I remember looking up and seeing you in the window, moving the printing press. <laughs> oh. I'm done. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now keep going, because I seem to recall it was an enchanted Gutenberg printing press, and the letters that fall out... Who the hell is Gutenberg? <laughs> Have you not heard of the Gutenberg Bible? The first thing ever printed on a printing press. Massive thing that Bible was, as was the printing press. Good luck moving it. (laughs) Bob's the fraud! I don't believe you, Bob. You're my hero! You lied! Um, However, I do believe it was an enchanted printing press, was it not? And the letters that fell out were led a trail straight to you. It did not want to be captured. The, wait, am I capturing the printing press? Okay, so I, I. <laughs> oh, you're a bumper river now. <laughs> the, the jingle there sounded perfectly. Um, I don't even remember what I'm getting. I'm to. pretty sure he was hidden in the head with the printing press and forgot all memory of this whole I'm entire so glad situation. That my friends are better at improv than me because this is way funnier. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, you were escaping the Tower of London with right. the printing press. Escaping the Tower of London with a yes. printing press. Okay. So fortunately, I had a printing press, so I could write. A printing press is so useful for escaping a tower. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. I'm going to print out so many pages. I'm going to tie them all together and use them as a rope to climb down the side of the tower. That's what I did. and not oh. going to do. That's what I did in the past. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There. I'm actively, and so when when I was when I was scaling down the side of the tower, uh, the wind was blowing quite fiercely, and um, it was it was honestly the most terrifying moment of my entire life, and I I thought for sure I was going to die. I kind of wish you did. <laughs> <laughs> bad Tyler, bad. <laughs> Anyway, I got to the end of the, the rope and ran for it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for putting up with that. I'm so sorry. It wasn't in okay. It wasn't in Oh, that's right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Give me one moment. <laughs> Barkeep, another round while Brazzer here attempts to remind us all of my, of my exploits. Brazzer seems a little moist. Oh. Oh. oh, if we're ordering drinks, he's a little dry. Oh, that's it, yes. Oh, yes, I remember now. I remember. Ribcage, I just really wanted to hear that story again about how you managed to defeat that killer demon tree by singing opera. Who suggested it? Uh, that was suggested by Brian X 88 Thank you, Brian, for rejogging my memory. Ah, yes, the killer tree in the opera. <laughs> what a time that it was. Why, it was a beautiful sunny day as I was taking my gal out for a lovely, lovely picnic. We sat under the tallest oak tree in the, in the estate possible and just looked out over the horizon. Everything was, everything was going swimmingly. But, unfortunately, the tree had other ideas. <laughs> a branch came swinging down, swept up my, my maiden, and, and kept her locked up in, within the... You know, the knot hole on the tree, you know? You know those things? Yeah. Where the owls live. Where the owls live, yes. She was, it, 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 there were owls as well, yes. So we'll, we'll get to those later. I'm looking forward to Somebody it. Somebody spray Tyler. Well, yes, but, but the, 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 my, my, my maiden dear, Angie, was, uh, was, was dreadfully frightened, uh, screaming ever so loudly. I too was screaming, but that's beside the point. Uh, so I, 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 I'm sorry, um, Ribcage. She was screaming a particular word that didn't really go with the uh, go with the, the the story. It seemed very out of place. 
But uh, could you remind us what, all of what that word was? Why, yes, I could, Lord Bunyan. She was screaming, Pheasant! 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 She is, was. She is, was. That, is, that, is that satisfactory, that's, Lord that's Bunyan? That's how I remember the story, yes. Oh, good, good. Had to, had to be sure. Had to be, had to be sure. <laughs> you don't know where those mitts have been. I don't want to. <laughs> but anyway, uh, in in my my hero- brave heroic panic, I uh I I told Angie that I would I would be right back with with someone from the guard and possibly the fire brigade as well. Um, so we came back, uh, the, the knights in hand, as well as the fire brigade, and, and the knights, they, they fought valiantly to try to, to try to best this tree, but lo, its, its oaken branches were, were too firm, too, too hardened, and uh, unable to be pierced by, by such common weaponry. Uh, as such, uh, the, the archers, in, in turn, tried to take their turn, but what the hell are archers going to do against a tree, honestly? <laughs> they just they stand no chance, obviously. Ah, no, no obviously none at all. Stand no none chance. at all. None. None whatsoever. But then uh, the fire brigade came, so. Um, <laughs> and, and they. Uh, <laughs> well, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> so. <sighs> it's me. Never mind. I lost it. I lost it. I lost it. I had it. I had it. Wait, but, but from what I remember, fire hadn't even been invented yet. <laughs> yes, that was later, wasn't it? No, there was definitely fire. <laughs> <laughs> so the fire brigade came, and you know, you know how fire brigade members are nowadays, where they put out fires. Well, back in those days, they just started them. <laughs> there wasn't much to do. It makes sense. No, yes, not at all. No fire, f- like they, they honestly, they were just arsonists funded by the government. But that's beside the point. Um, <laughs> they, uh, so we, 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 we paid them handsomely, and, and they took to to lighting the tree on fire. Now, that uh, you may think would have subdued the tree, but not only was the tree not subdued, it was also on fire, and my, my dear sweet Angie was, was being roasted. Oh, and from my memory, the tree was kind of into being on fire. It was kind of into it. Oh, yes, 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 very much so. Um, yeah, it was, uh, you, couldn't, you couldn't really tell because trees can't talk, but there was definitely body language going on where it was like squirming a little bit in such a, such a pleasurable manner, so yes, indeed. Sorry for the secondhand spritzing, uh, Lord Bunyan. Cage. <laughs> um, yes, we, we had to get her out before the before the flames seared my dear Angie, keeping her juices sealed inside. Um, so we uh, so in order for so this is actually also the story of when the actual fire brigade w- turned from being arsonists to people who put out fire. Fortunately, there was a lake nearby. They were dousing buckets of lava on there, but but unfortunately, uh, they were getting they were they were growing weary from from uh, having carried all those those buckets there. So I took it upon myself. But wait, you used up all the water in the lake, and now the lady of the lake is mad at you, and she won't give you the sword to help defeat it. Are you defeating something? <laughs> You had the f- never mind. <laughs> so, so funny. So, 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 f- hold on, hold on. Oh. Funny story about the lady of the lake. Yes, she was angry in coming out, but but I told her the the heartbreaking story of how the the the, the cursed oak uh, came to kidnap my dear sweet Angie and. And it was, and, and she was so touched that she's like, here, take all the water in the lake. Don't worry about it. Eventually, King Arthur will get the sword. And, and we were all like, didn't that already happen? Wasn't <laughs> the Lady of the Lake also an opera singer from what I remember? Why, yes, she was. Also, <laughs> I deserve that. But, well, I did incorporate your part of the story in there. So, yes, you did deserve it. <laughs> Anywho, um, yes. Uh, so, as I was saying, we were, we were, uh, she was like, there's only one way to defeat a killer tree, and that is to sing opera to it. But I can only do it in a duet. And where she, she tenderly grabbed my, my hand, and I was like, I, yes, I will do this. I will do this, sing opera, and, and we sang. Shall we, we, sang. Shall we reenact it? Yeah, actually, uh, we shall. It, as, I, as I recall, the song that you sang was, We Didn't Start the Fire. <laughs> 
It went something I, like this. Well, it was a long time ago, so I only remember the refrain. So, <laughs> so does everyone else repeat. <laughs> we didn't start the fire. It was always burning since the world's been turning. We didn't start the fire. <laughs> and not only did the fire wait, wait, wait. you said they were holding hands with the lady of the lake <laughs> we didn't start the fire <laughs> so yes the lady in the lake and, and I managed to uh, to to not only douse the well the, the, no the, the, I'm sorry the fire brigade doused the fire the the, the tree was quelled and, and my dear sweet Angie was uh, was was uh, was set free however I'd, I'd grown a, a fondness for the Lady of the Lake, so unfortunately, after that such a traumatic experience, I had to dump Angie on the spot. <laughs> no. And that's how we defeated the killer tree using opera. Beautiful. A wonderful day. Yes, thank you. All right, so at this point, um, Tyler's still still. I have story. to tell you. Oh God, Tyler, I can't wait. I'm very worried. I'm very worried as well. <laughs> Brazzer. Like turned to a movie. Oh, God. Yes. As all of us sitting here in this pub know, you like it hot. God, save very, us very hot. Saibi, uh, Saibi has has jogged my memory that um, at at one point I do remember that you ingested the hottest hot sauce known to man. No one else could do it. Where, where did you acquire such a thing, and how did you get it down your throat? <laughs> Oh my this god! This is actually one of my favorite stories to tell. I'm so happy that you brought oh, it up. Oh. Yes. So I was actually on a trip. I can't hear this. I can't hear this. I can't. <laughs> Thank god you left. So, as I recall, I was going on a trip to Norway, everybody's favorite country. And, and the number one spot for hot sauces, yes. The number one spot. Norwegian people love their hot sauces. So, uh, well known Nor Norwegian fact. Ah, oh, welcome back, Bub. I see you decided to join us after all. Where, why did you leave us? <laughs> oh, we'll see. <laughs> well, from, from, uh, what you missed was that our, our dear Brazzer here went to, uh, went to Norway. <laughs> yes. home, of, home of the hottest hot sauces. Oh, yes, right. I remember that, yeah. So this was during my nomad days, where I liked to travel completely naked. So I was walking the Norwegian, ba uh, the Norwegian beaches in the complete nude. Well, wait a minute. What about your belongings that you carried with you? You, you obviously needed, needed money to do some of these things, correct? Oh, God. Well, as you know, <laughs> humans have many orifices. <laughs> I will leave it at that. We got there, okay. <laughs> How, how many coins was it? <laughs> I forgot about the spray. Sorry. <laughs> so I was walking the Norwegian beaches, completely naked, and I came across this caravan of little elves. These elves were called the... Oh, what was their name again? Did you remember Lord Bunyan from that, tor that time I told the story? Oh, the, the, yes, the famous Norwegian elves. The didgeridoo. The didgeridoos, the little didgeridoos, yes. The didgeridoos, oh, yes, quite. So I met upon, I came across the didgeridoos, and they were very impressed by the size of my body. <laughs> Your shoulders, I think it was. They, they very, oh. my height, my height. Oh, I'm yes, six, yes, I'm yes, yes. Foot, I'm yes, six Norwegians foot. love I'm six height. Foot four. Yes. Yes, I'm a very forgot. tall person. They love the size of my body. I just, it was built like a tree trunk. Your, your body, your body was built like a tree trunk. <laughs> very much so. So, I saw them, and they were they were starting up this new business called Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> it's it's actually really popular, I hear, quite <laughs> nowadays. So, in, in, in 18th century, wherever the hell we are, Buffalo Wild Wings. 18th century Norway did love Buffalo Wild Wings. That's true. And the leader of the didgeridoos, Sean Evans, walked right up to me and said, I have a new flavor of hot sauce that we need to taste. But the didgeridoos did not have an acquired taste for hot things. Me, see, on the other hand, ha I have a great acquired taste for hot things. Now, see, Brazzer, as I recall, the, uh, the didgeridoos were actually the official taste testers of all Norwegian hot sauces. 
Is that not right? Yes, but they can only go up to a certain scale before they would spontaneously combust. Oh, that's right. My, my mistake. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So, I was tasting all of these hot sauces, and I forgot what the purpose of me tasting these was. What was the end goal for me? You... <laughs> As, as it, you and ingested it somehow. You ingested the, the hottest sauce known to man when no one else could do it, and you had to descri- describe how you got it down your throat. Well, now, hang on. As I recall, as they were bringing out the hot sauce, one of them tripped and spilled it on you, and you being naked and all, well, can't imagine how that would have fared. Yes, so that is why uh, I uh, no longer have any genitals. <laughs> Yes, I do recall that part. It's very unfortunate, but it had to be done so you could try the sauce. Yes, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. It was a very painful experience, but I pushed through because I knew the importance of hot wings across the world. That's right. So I, I pushed through. So what I had to do is I had to go to the nearby maiden of Derry. And she had this special dairy concoction that lines the inside of your throat so you can take hot sauces down your throat that nobody else could take down their throat. Yeah, say, please, say down your throat one more time. <laughs> so I put this concoction down my throat <laughs> and walked back to the didgeridoos. And then Sean Evans held up on a fluffy pillow the hottest hot sauce known to man. I put the ho- a drip, just a single drip, and you've probably seen in the... Uh, well, never mind. I was going to reference Spongebob, but none <laughs> of us know what that is, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, this drop is of it, hot sauce... is Spongebob the, the gentleman who lives down, <laughs> down at the cobblers who's all, often trying to shine your shoes for nickels? Yes. <laughs> Spongebob the shoe shiner. He is a very kind man, but currently I had too many things down my throat to even talk about this, so I can't go on. Anyways, so Sean Evans, prese- of the didgeridoos, presented this hot sauce to me, and he dripped it out of the bottle, and it was so hot that it had a face of a very evil man on it. It was the face of Voldemort. And then you had to fight Voldemort in order to get the... Th- ah, yes, that's right, yes. There was a, a grand wizard. A great wizard. <laughs> sorry, sorry. You know who. Whoa. Yeah, Whoa. A wizard, Whoa. an important wizard. Whoa. An important wizard that was on the bottle. Yes, I remember. And you had to, you had to duel him in order to be given the option to swallow his... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I forgot about the evil wizard. I... <laughs> I forgot about the evil wizard sauce I had to swallow. Yes. Yes. So, so, out of this drip of hot sauce, the evil wizard Voldemort suddenly appeared, and we went into a duel, so we pulled out our Beyblades, and we <laughs> let them rip. My Beyblade was much stronger, as you all know. <laughs> but wait a minute, wait a minute. Didn't the copyright owner of Bla- Beyblades come and put a stop to that immediately? <laughs> no, I had permission from the copyright holder. <laughs> it was a brand deal. Wait, wouldn't I be spraying you in that case then? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anyways. Anyway. <laughs> You're not pulling a fire not invented on me here. So after beating the... Evil wizard Voldemort in a Beyblade competition. <laughs> I secured the right to put the hottest hot sauce down my throat. The end. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, that's, yeah, that was good. That's fine. All right. Uh, so now, now that the four of us have told our stories, I'm gonna um, take improv classes. Uh, <laughs> uh, the production crew is gonna put the straw poll, uh, put the straw poll in the chat, uh, so you can actually vote for who had the best story, and we'll actually get a chance to see what the audience thought of our tall tales. E- so we'll just we'll give that. Mine a was the tallest of tales, though, because oh, you it know was... I have a large body. Yes, yes, I remember. 
a, lar- a large body and not much else after that that hot sauce incident. From Monty Python, where the where like the, the Duke is trying to convince his son to marry like the woman he is in love. It's like, what's wrong with you? She's she's uh, pretty. She's rich. She's got huge tracts of land. <laughs> Someone in the chat says Josh has no votes. Oh. <laughs> I have 14 votes, so... How long does the... <laughs> how long does the poll run? Uh, as long as you want it to. Okay. The person is Josh with 38 votes. Josh had, thir- th- Josh had 38 votes. <laughs> Criminally underfunded. Good, good, good work, <laughs> London Tower Fire. Then it's Steven with 306. I had 306. Woo! All Thank right, you. this is it, this is it! And then it's Tyler oh, yes. with 497. Tyler had 497. And Tom had 592. Tom wins the round. Good job. Good job, Ripcage. I'd like to dedicate this to my ex-girlfriend, Angie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, now we're actually going to get four completely different people in here to play this game. And we're going to see how they do. You guys were all great. <laughs> Thank you. Even you. <laughs> that doesn't help. I am Dari Foley St. Atach. Oh, damn, this is wonderful. Wow. <laughs> hey, y'all. <laughs> I'm Padu Kazoo. Wait, was that my name? Yes, it's Padu Kazoo. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'm West Couch West. That's my name, huh? West I'm... Couch West? No, no, I'm West Couch of West. The, the Westerly Couch. Gotcha. What's up, dudes? I am Toxo the Fair, y'all. All right, let's do it. <laughs> the Western. Not what Southern. Kazoo? What is it? You seem like an awfully tough cookie. I like long walks on the beach, and I like flowers. Ah, uh, I see that your life has softened up quite a bit. Uh, after the time uh, that Jay Jennings reminds me of, of that time that you crossed the mountain when your wagon broke down, you broke both of your legs, and your dog ran away. I ate my dog. That's a real touching story. <laughs> so emotional. Okay, so that's right, every time. What about the other facets of survival? The other facets of survival? Well, you see, I was going up the mountain. There were some nice flowers on the other end. Nice flowers. The best meadow you've ever seen in this large bowl-like thing. Tall mountain, tall mountain. I go up there, and my wagon, you know, the wheel, is shaky. Not meant to go up mountains. It pops off like I thought I was going to in the middle of that meadow. And then it just rolls down the hill. It goes and it goes. I tumbled out, both my legs broken because it got stuck in a rock. Actually, both my legs were gone. I didn't have legs anymore. <laughs> Wait. What got stuck in a rock and your legs were broken from? My legs went under the rock. I was tumbling down the mountain. Do you know how much force it takes when you're rolling down a mountain? You go flying! My legs went under and I went over. (laughs) (laughs) So, I needed to get over that mountain. My dog wanted to run away, you know? So, I didn't let it. (laughs) <laughs> it ran away in my tummy! That's what happened. So, I was kind of boned. There was nothing there. <laughs> I had no legs. I tied up my legs nice and tight so I wouldn't bleed out. Now, hold on just a darn minute here, okay? Yeah. You're telling me you somehow chased your dog without your legs and then you ate him. Now, how'd my you do that? My arms are real strong! <laughs> Why is this in West Virginia? <laughs> it's in West, not West Virginia. Get it straight. My arms real strong. Who says I can't run with my arms? Hold on. I, 
I read on the internet one time that you also didn't have oh, arms yeah. at the time either. He, ri- he bit your arms off as well. That's what teeth are for. <laughs> okay, gotcha. I did kind of this cartwheel motion. I kind of did this. <laughs> With my teeth, I buried it in the dirt and scooted myself along and just did that real fast about a million times. I did that real fast and I caught my dog real easy. <laughs> All right, thanks, thanks, do that. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Gotta get things straight. <laughs> so, with that being said, this is a real steep mountain. Real steep. So, you might be wondering why, or how rather, I could climb up this mountain with no arms and no legs. You see, I had glue in my wagon. (laughs) So I just slathered myself in this super glue, which was just sticky enough that I could do a motion kind of like this, like an inchworm. Now hold on. All the way up. Just a dumb moment here, all right? You're saying, you're saying that you, you got to your glue bottle and you opened it with what? Your mouth, because you don't have arms, you don't have legs. Do you honestly think that my glue bottle would be intact if my legs weren't intact, attack, attached after that tumble? My wagon rolled down the hill. There was a puddle of glue. It was a big old vat of glue. All I had to do was go into that bottle, big old vat bottle, slather myself in it real good, and crawl back on out. Now, hold on. How did you move after you got the glue on you? Like an inchworm. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. I'm in perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So. Oh, that's the ultimate score. Shit, she's tough. <laughs> so I went my inchworm way up that mountain. Took me five days. Good thing that dog was big. (laughs) Wait, how did you go to the bathroom? (laughs) Along the way. (laughs) Spray him. (laughs) So, I got to my medal eventually. And that's when... I buried myself deep into the earth in a cocoon <laughs> and died. <laughs> the final stage of your life force. Exactly. This year, I'm a zombie. Okay? <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. What's your question? How did you get your arms and legs back that you have here right now, zombie? I stole them! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> ah. Do you want to see my stitches? No. Smart! <laughs> Alright, now uh, Jack will be choosing a story prompt for... Uh... Yeah. For for da, da, dairy, sorry, <laughs> dairy, dairy, dairy fully Saint Attach. Dairy. Someone right. on Twitter asked, "Why is Miss Say always feral in these stories?" <laughs> Pretty much. So I gotta know, from Zero Pony Fifty Five and I gotta know, how did you threaten the richest man in London using only a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. First of all, the thing that you have to know is that this sandwich uh, contained slices of pineapple in a time where pineapple was grown only in very remote islands and was worth so much money that there existed entire corporations to renting out pineapples to private parties. Real thing, look it up. So they were very sought after, and this sandwich is something that had only been enjoyed by the richest of billionaires in the world. I managed to obtain it by just simply working on one of these boats and smuggling one off during one of my shifts. And... 
How did you use? How did you move the entire boat by yourself without any crew or help whatsoever? <laughs> no, I was on one of the crews. It was my job. Uh, I was on the boat, and I just merely managed to smuggle one off because we had stumbled upon an island where there were hundreds of them growing, and you know they didn't notice if one was gone. You know, it's just kind of. It was really easy to do. I was in the right place at the right time. Uh, I was the one guarding the stash at nighttime, and I had the privilege to do that. So, um, yeah, sorry, tough, <laughs> tough cookies. Um, so I had gotten the brilliant idea that you know, people rented these sandwiches. Um, that's just, people rented these. People rented these pineapples, and I was thinking, what if I took the greatest thing ever, sliced bread, and I put the pineapple between that, making an even greater thing than the greatest thing ever. Now hold on, just a darn moment here. You're saying the greatest thing was sliced bread, but sliced bread wasn't invented until two years after your story, son. Ancient Egypt existed after London? Damn. <laughs> I'm not. I'm just telling all the facts here. I'm the historical. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the history teacher. Yeah, this is... So, um, okay. I only know West stuff. That's American history for you. We no, only it's care. in West, sir, not America. Yeah. Well, yeah, right. We Western world D's only care about ourselves and don't learn about other countries in school. Anyway, so I had combined two of the greatest things ever, and. I had made an even greater thing ever. So, um, you know, the, these billionaires, they're often very meanies. They, uh, you know, they, 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 they lobbied against us moving away from wood-based production. And I didn't really like that. Not a whole lot of... Oh, um, excuse me. Uh, my best friend is a millionaire. And he's not a meanie. He's a really... He's, he's billionaires really nice. are the meanies. Billion... Yeah, well, he... He's a millionaire. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so they were lobbying against us moving away from wood-based production. They didn't like this whole new metal thing that we had going on. And I took great offense to that because we could have much finer boats for getting these pineapples to the rich if we just had metal boats instead of wooden ones. So I took it down to his place. And I showed him the fruits of my efforts. Ha. <laughs> Thank you, you two kind. <laughs> and I showed him, what do I got here? I got, I got a pineapple sandwich. Have you ever seen such a glorious feat of human engineering? This too could be in the houses of every wealthy person if you just allowed us to move on. Why would they care? Why would they care if they could make more money just renting out the pineapples themselves as decorations? <laughs> Why would they care about your stupid sliced sandwich? <laughs> That's a whole lot of money! <laughs> well, you see... Um... <laughs> renting out pineapples is only <laughs> renting out pineapples you can only rent them out to one party at a time whereas sandwiches if you slice up the pineapple can be eaten by men yes do you know how long a pineapple keeps they can take that pineapple back and give it to another family for another billion dollars <laughs> that's a lot of billions <laughs> That pineapple can last a month. <laughs> well, you see, if it costs that much to do... What am I? Sayaka, whatever her last name is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shy>. Persona. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm supposed to be doing a shooting here. <laughs> Your accent says it all. <laughs> well, the yeah, thing is, West. Hell yeah. well, he was not a very intelligent, wealthy person, as they tend to be. Um, so he just kind of looked at my sandwich and how great it was, and he just went, well, damn, I guess I just got to get out of town with logic like that. 
And so we all, that was how metal boats were invented and how I drove the billionaires at a very historically significant event. You should look it up on Google because you will find it. Thank you. Oh my God, it's over. <laughs> Talk so the fair. So I got a really good question for you. Yeah. I'm not the only one dying to know this, all right? Because, you know, from where I'm from, it's totally new concept. I'll, I'll tell you what's so, up. So, from, from Utah 248. He's asking me, like, you know, Ron the Grapevine, how did you start the world's first mosh pit? <laughs> <laughs> I really want to know. Oh, man. All right, so... <laughs> I, was, I was taking a shower one day, <laughs> and, and my water just turned off. You know, and I don't know if I'm doing like a Western. I'm, I'm a Western guy right now. You're not from West, yeah. son. So I, I, my water just shut off. <laughs> and I was, I, it's, I was working out in the yard all day, and I was so dirty. And I had to go to a metal show that night. But I could not take this shower. And man, did I smell bad. Like, it was, it was rank. Why did you smell so bad? Well, I... <laughs> I was picking. <laughs> I was picking flowers. <laughs> How would that make you smell bad? You should smell good. Take it from They're, me. I climbed up a mountain. That's so great. They were very poisonous flowers. <laughs> they, they were very poisonous flowers, and um, and they also smelled terrible. <laughs> I live in a swamp. <laughs> and the toxo. <laughs> And, um, so, but so it's a very it's a very swampy poisonous garden, and um, so it made a very bad smell. And I really wanted to shower it off, but I couldn't. Now, hold on, just a dog minute here. Tell me more about the donkey that you started the mosh pit with, son. Yeah, well, I was gonna I was gonna get to the donkey. Yeah, like, so I'm at I'm at the metal show and. Basically, no one wants to be around me, so I'm in the crowd, and a giant circle forms around me because no one wants to smell me, except uh, out of nowhere, from behind the bar, a, a donkey just jumps over the bar and gets into this circle with me, and he just starts running into me, and I'm like, this is kind of cool. I'm feeling the energy from this donkey running into me. Nobody else, there's a giant circle around me because, you know. The guy sounds like an ass. Y yeah, <laughs> he was an ass. He was, I was like, this guy is an ass right now. And side note, that's how the name Jackass was because me and the ass <laughs> were, but that's, that started, that started that. Oh my God. So anyway, so, that's a cool side point. Um, I thought your name was Toxo the Fair. Jack's my nickname. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's makes what, perfect sense. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, so yeah, we started running into each other, and people were like, "Okay, this guy smells really bad, but I'm really enjoying watching Jack and this ass go at it in this in this circle." Whoa. And they're like, "So Whoa. basically, don't take that out of." Whoa. Don't, West, all right. Don't take that out of context. <laughs> and um, and then suddenly people were like, you know, there was also clothespins around, like conveniently. So people would put that on their nose. They don't do that anymore because now I can shower in the mosh pit. Now, somebody once told me <laughs> that those flowers that you rolled in were probably really, really, really toxic. Yeah. Did well, you not get that entire crowd just completely deathly ill? <laughs> what yeah. happened with that? Well, it's it gets a little. This is a kind of a sadder part of the story. Um, <laughs> but let's just say that uh, death metal was invented. That night. <laughs> 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 oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Damn! A lot of a lot of new. A lot of new terms were invented that night, jackass and death metal. <laughs> so, so basically, yeah, uh, we start, you know, people started, they grabbed their clothespins before they, before they unfortunately passed away from the toxic flowers. Um, 
they uh, they grabbed their clothespins and ran around in this circle and we started you know enjoying it and the band was playing and they were far enough away that they were unaffected so they were performing and that was the very first mosh pit <laughs> no it's not west couch it's high my first name is han han <laughs> Hi. West Couch is my last name, and I'm from West, just so there's no confusion. Hi, hi. Hi. I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm from West. Dairy it's like Foley. dairy something. Dairy Foley. I'm lactose intolerant. Actually, I'm pretty intolerant in general, but especially <laughs> lactose. Oh. Well, that sure is a dairy folly. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so, how, how was your trip? <laughs> and this is a nice bar, right? We all down for another round yeah, of drinks? Yeah, that's Cause good. I'm thirsty. Very, very, a lot of turbulence on the carriage. <laughs> Watch out for any bar donkeys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we don't have none of those over in West. They sound pretty rank. I have a question for you. Yeah. And this is very on topic. All right, I want to hear it. Lay it on me. Epic Guitar 64 wants to know how you robbed the number five train with only five bullets. Only five men with five lawmen on your tail and doing so in only five minutes. Well, I'll tell you straight up, all right? The number five train wasn't the train I was supposed to get on, all right? That was a total accident. You see, I woke up late that that morning, all right? You know, kind of had a lot to drink the night before. Actually, it was way too much. So I woke up, had a drink. It was, it was only like three drinks, okay? It wasn't really too much. Wait. Isn't it true that you told me last week that you only like you're you're such a lightweight that you pretty much pass out after one drink? How did you drink three drinks? I was just crapping on your son. Ugh. I can handle my drinks. Oh, okay. Okay, do I spray myself? No, you spray me. Oh, okay. <laughs> that part of the story is true. Okay. I drink a lot. All right. If you heard that, you'd oh. be mistaken. Okay. So. The number five train, I was supposed to get on the number four train, right? You know, it was just kind of one of those things. So I ended up having three or four drinks, and then I go over to the train station, and I try to explain the situation. They're like, sorry, you know, the number four train, it's sold out. So I'm like, damn. <laughs> so I go back to the bar, and I hear all these fine gentlemen. They're talking about getting on the number five train. But the problem was they, they bought five tickets. They had five people in the party, but... Someone else just had to sleep in. You know, it was probably a drummer, right? They're, they're always doing that. We got the metal, but we, we got plenty of drums. So it was just one of those unfortunate things. So I go over to him and say, hey, fellas, see, I missed the number four train. I, I hear you guys talking about the, the number five train. Is there any way I can get in on that? So they look at me with some suspicion but they noticed my incredibly mighty beard, which I've long since shaven after what happened here. So they go, yeah, we can get you in on this. So the plan starts. Now, this is not where the five minute timer is because we haven't boarded the train yet. They just yeah, started looping yeah. me in on this. Yeah. You know? So I tell them I'm from West. I tell them my name's Hi On. And they're like, hey, Hi On. Nice to meet you. So we, we start hatching this scheme after about like, I don't know, maybe, maybe just like one more drink or so. So we then go to the train station. What's your middle name? My middle name? We don't have middle names in West, okay? We have two last names, if that makes <laughs> sense. Like, I, I don't know. My first name is Hot I'm. My second name is West Couch. I'm from West. You wouldn't understand West things. Uh, What's your middle name, Biju? I'm looking at your tag here. And your first name is Hi I'm. Your last name is of West Smiley Face. And your middle name is West Couch. No. It is in the middle. That is absolutely false. I, I thought I heard that your middle name was sitting on the. Sitting on the. Take that back. <laughs> it is not. And I'll have you know, fellow Westerner. Of West. That's so people know where I'm from. This ain't my middle name. Take that back. 
<laughs> ah! <laughs> so, damn! All right, so we get to the train station. We roll up there with no confusion over our last names or middle names. <laughs> These gentlemen are fine, all right? I don't care if they're from West, South, if they're from England, London, France. I don't want no Americans, though. Just saying, you know, they... They're, they're, they're with the donkeys, right? <laughs> I don't I don't know. It's kind of weird. So anyway, we we get to the train station and we we get on the number tr the number five train, all right? Because we have this plan, we have all five of our tickets. This guy runs over. He's like, Hey fellas! I'm here. It's the other guy who slept in late. So we're like, shoot, we already have our plan in place. We just run on the train, because at this point, our uh, cover's blown. So we get on the train. There's five minutes, because they have one of those, those like, it's a thing with the, the, the numbers on it and the hands, and it tells you the time. It was new. We don't have those kind of things in West, but it, it's one of those things that apparently is used for keeping track of time. So we get on there, and there's, like, a limited amount of time. So we're, we're like, all right, so who has the gun? And then we all look at each other like, shoot, Larry had the gun. He's the guy who slept in late. He's, he's running over there. So that ends up shaving off about two minutes. We have to run over to him. He still has a pint of beer in his hand along with his gun in the train station. And we're like, all right, give me the beer. So we take the beer. I have like pretty much about half of it, you know. Okay, maybe, maybe the full thing. So we're down about three minutes left before the train departs. And I thought alcohol wasn't allowed at the train station. You know what? Guns weren't either. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't stop wrong. me. It guns didn't stop me. Everyone has guns. Yeah, well, yeah, you're right about that. So that's when the security came over and they're like, hey, you can't take alcohol in. So that's why I drank it. I'll have you know, because what there's, when there was no alcohol, they couldn't arrest me for carrying alcohol. <laughs> Damn. All right. So we got about three of these minutes left. And we got the gun. It's got the five bullets on it. We got to get this, this whole train going. So we, we board the train. We get on. We tell everyone to get off. There's a mosh pit over at the stadium. So they run over there, and they think it's cool. I hear later it was to die for, so we'll definitely miss that one. But we, we get on this train, we're riding, and it's like, oh, man, we got five bullets. We got to use them to get off of this thing. We, we got to get away with it. But then I realize I could buy a lot of booze with all this money. And there's like four other guys on the train plus a driver. I don't know why the driver started. I mean, you know, you think with everyone getting off, like, he would have gone to the mosh, but apparently he doesn't like music or something. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to ask. So with his gun, it's got its five bullets in it. I go over. I say, hey, buddy, you need to get off the train. And he's like, D I'm driving right now. Can't you just go back to your seat? I'm like, no, everyone's off the train already. So, you know, I had to, had to take over, let's say. So the train's driving on autopilot, and... Wait. Hold on. Trains did not have auto autopilot back then. That is a new feature. How did you learn how to drive this train so well? It's not, you, you have to go to school for that. I'm gonna tell you what I meant when I said autopilot, son. I meant the train driver may have been uh, removed from the game, if you know what I mean. So that was one of them bullets. That was one of them there bullets. Here's where the uh, bullet number four went. I go over to my friend, and I'm like, well, he was a new friend. You know, he was, he was the one who, well, it wasn't Larry's friend. It was the other guy. And I said, hey, I kind of want my booze money. So nothing personal. All right, so I got three bullets left in this, this pistol, you know. So I go over, well, it was a revolver, but whatever the case. So I go over. I see the other three. They're, like, trying to find all the money and whatever everyone brought on the train. I was looking for the booze. Like, I don't care. I overslept. I just wanted to get to further west, you know? It's just wanted to go on vacation. There's more drinks there. So I'm like, hey, guys, I kind of want all this money for myself. So pop, pop. And 
I missed the third one because I I had like the beer has been kicking in at that point. So he pulls out his gun, and I'm like, damn. <laughs> so he shoots me. I end up like falling on the floor. I can't get up because I am just drunk, son. I am floored, literally. So at this point, the the autopilot it uh kind of has a, a bit of a rough patch so he ends up falling down to the ground too he drops his gun i pick it up i find out it's just full of water <laughs> so i don't know if this have any bullets or anything at this point so at that point i'm like you got any scotch on you we have all the money here let's just get into town Nothing personal. And he was he was cool with it. I was actually surprised. So we talked about it. We talked about Larry that we left behind. This guy, he just he was a, a piece of work. So long story short, we got away with it and uh well <laughs> I ended up giving him a swirly in the bathroom. <laughs> he didn't make it after that, so I got all the stuff, I got away with it. And you expect us to believe everybody disembarked the train in five minutes? Yeah, Two, it was it was a really empty actually, train. You said there were three minutes left before that happened. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So at that point, there were like maybe six or seven people on, but they were all going to a metal concert anyway, which was weird because it was in further west. But they heard there was one at the stadium there, so they're like, "Yeah, we're going metal!" So um, metal doesn't sell out stadiums. What <laughs> what metal show was this? It was like toxic something. <laughs> and you know what? You don't know people from West. They don't know about metal. Ugh. So they had to try it out. They were looking for it, man. <laughs> okay. All right. I think I'm out of bullets here. So we got out. And uh, after, after I gave uh, Ben, weird name, after I gave him that swirly, he, I noticed that he, uh, he, he didn't have his head afterwards because toilets, they, they were actually guillotines back in the day. It was, it was kind of weird. It was a very disturbing swirly. So that's how I got away with it. And I ended up getting the train in five minutes. It was, it was weird, but it was great. <laughs> West side. All right, so we're going uh, to put the straw poll oh. up uh, for, for our four <laughs> storytellers here uh, and let you guys vote on... Uh, <laughs> on their, on their damn, damn stories. Fourth place is Emil with 239 votes. Emil with 239 votes. Wait, that's not Josh. Yeah. <laughs> Fourth place. Uh, 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 he gave up third is yeah. Jack with 363. 363, Jack. What for Jack? Then uh, second is Maryland with 385. 385, Maryland, second place. 446. 446. Four, yeah! Say. Yeah! Very, very nice. All right, we're going to get uh, Family Jewels, like Insane in the Rain, Nintendo Capri Sun up here to tell some some slight, slightly quicker tales. I'm going to go pick some swamp flowers now. And uh, I'm going to bring I'm going to bring Tom back as a as a challenger. I'm going to find me a doggy. How do your throat's not hurt? All right. So You're more from west, son. Hello, fellow 18th century gentlemen. My name is Johan von Johan. Call you Jan for short. Sure. Indeed, it is nice to be around with you all in this 18th century establishment. My name is Leviticus the Precipitous the Fourth. <laughs> so he sweats a lot. Indeed. Very much so. Nice. Hi, I'm Supermarket. <laughs> And you all remember me, Ribcage. Oh, returning champion. <laughs> Leviticus, Sorry, I was uh, chatting with my friend Wee, who ah, uh, we. yes, I know the fellow. donated $25 to Direct Relief. Um, Wee wants to know how you barely escaped getting guillotined, despite inventing the actual guillotine yourself. <laughs> ah. Well, I must inform you that the guillotine was not originally invented with the intent of being used for the de decapitation of the human race. It was, in fact, invented for the quick preparation of vegetables. 
You may, you may ask yourself, in, in these time, these trying times of the 18th century in which food takes many hours to prepare, how on earth am I to cut all these carrots, celery, rutabagas, various vegetables and, and other fruits that need to be chopped up? And my solution was to invent the guillotine. A large blade which could serrate and chop many vegetables with a single, with a single chop, a single release. And all these vegetables could then be placed into a pan. I do not know if the term saute was used in this area, <laughs> this era, but that is what we did. We in France, it. I would assume so. In uh, saute, <laughs> saute indeed, indeed. So, however, I do have one question. How, 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 would, how, how did did you manage to to pass this off with with the safety council? This seems very dangerous and seems to have led entirely to it being used for decapitation. I think you underestimate. In fact, I mean overestimate. <laughs> <laughs> I think you overestimate the intelligence of the safety council at the time. The government's regulations were next to none. In fact, one could acquire such dangerous blades so sharp that looking at them would cause your eyeballs to slightly bleed. Like so. Indeed. <laughs> ah! <laughs> so, getting back to my story about the invention of the guillotine and how I uh, managed to avoid kill, almost ma managed to escape killing myself with it, despite being the person who created it. During the conception phase of the guillotine, in which I and I built my factory and I tested many, many blades, I had a visitor come, and this visitor was actually Johan. Do you remember this? In, do you remember this instance when you came over to my factory? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was there. In fact, I uh, I can't remember, but I think guillotine uh, is short for uh, what was it short for? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, let me just it was short. It was short for Guillerme. The creator of the man. <laughs> we don't know how I got the name guillotine. But on the day that Johan came to visit my factory, I was creating the guillotine. He wanted to uh, try out cu cutting various materials. Uh, he brought his vegetables, as was, as, was, as was the intent, but he also brought other materials, such as small trunks of trees, um, various instruments that existed at the time, and other things that were closer to human flesh, such as sausages or um, water balloons, mm -hmm. <laughs> which, res which resemble the fluid, the, the fluid and flexible nature of the human skin. Yeah. Bef but <laughs> before we tested vegetables and all these other things, and the guillotine worked just fine. In fact, it it cut several hundred uh, like rows and rows of carrots lined up, chopped them all neatly all at the same time. And as we continued to experiment, we decided to continue trying these things that are more similar to the humans, just to see if it would have any adverse impacts on the human flesh, because this was not the original intent of the machine. Um, as we were doing this, inebriation did occur. As it does. As, as it does in these, in these circumstances, where we had, to, we had to wait for the vegetables to be cooked after we chopped them. And during that time, Johan and I in, ingested many, many a alcoholic beverage at the time and lost much of our sense of reason. So because of this, uh, it came to the point where we decided to say, you know what, let's, so <laughs> let's try it out. I, 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 would, I, I said, I will literally put my arm on the line, put my life on the line, and I lay down at the guillotine. Now, as I recall, however, weren't there, weren't there plenty of members who, who were uh, part of the, the initial start of the French Revolution present as well? Indeed, indeed. They were, they were, uh, they were there with all their weapons, <laughs> their, their weapons and their flags. They really wanted their food, I guess. Yes, <laughs> yes. In fact, I neglected to mention that this, uh, this testing of the guillotine was also a, a celebratory dinner for all of them. 
and they were all in the presence, uh, all in the presence of the the invention of this wonderful, potentially wonderful, potentially harmful machine. They were very excited to have their stew, uh, com complete with neatly chopped vegetables, as was promised by my creation. However, they also engaged in the drinking of many alcoholic beverages, many. and many, 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 many. many. And they were not privy to the dangers of the guillotine that would become apparent as soon as I laid on the table on which the guillotine was created. So as I lay, I motioned for Johan to, to uh, at this time, you had to ascend a ladder to the top of the guillotine for it to work. There was... Right. The, of course, yes. Convenience as was... As you did with, do with all kitchen appliances. Indeed, indeed, indeed. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> convenience was not of the utmost priority in creating this machine. We had to place the blade fairly high up for it to gather enough momentum to come down and chop at a reasonable velocity. Right. As lettuce does. As lettuce does. <laughs> As lettuce does. You can't simply just let the knife fall from this, from this height. You must ascend several stories, in fact, for the guillotine to come down and chop. So, as Johan, as Johan summited all these stairs leading up to the top of the guillotine, the members of the French, the founding members of the French Revolution saw him ascending and thought, hmm, something bad might be happening. So one of these, one of these, uh, these members of the French Revolution had a, had a baguette in their hand that was in fact stale and in fact very, very hard. <laughs> and they realized that. One of them somehow managed to, be, to sober up and realize that if Johann were to, in fact, release the guillotine, and let the knife blade come tumbling down upon my body, that it would stunt the future development of weaponry that they may use, because they realized these blades were not just good for, cooking vet, for, for cutting vegetables. They can cut vegetables, they can cut pretty much anything. So, this member of the French baguette bent his baguette at a 90 degree angle. Keep going. <laughs> Go on bent his baguette at a 90 degree angle, cocked it behind his head, seasoned it before throwing it, as one does, toasted it, and put some, so put some butter in the middle, and then <laughs> tossed it at Johan. As I recall, this was also the invention of garlic bread. <laughs> multiple, multiple things were invented in this, in this uh, interaction. Garlic bread, the guillotine. The boomerang. And the boomerang. <laughs> Subsequent, subsequently, in many years, many years, the invention uh, through the through the the, the, the the influx of traders eventually made its way to Australia, in which the they realized that bread was not the optimal material for the boomerang, and uh, it had better aerodynamic capabilities. If it was made of wood. If I do remember correctly, the end of this story happens fairly quickly, uh, so we can move on to the rest of the story. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. Indeed, the boomerang hits Johan. He falls, and I don't die. Very good. <laughs> Uh, just Yo one, Johan didn't remember this because he was blackout uh, drunk at the time. Just, <laughs> just one question about this story. Uh, if I do recall, this was 10 years ago when you were 10 years old. Uh, <laughs> so how was it that you were able to acquire these many drinks? I recall that you helped me with that. Oh, I'm I, en I, <laughs> I enlist. I, oh, no. I enlisted. I enlisted. I enlisted your ne'er dwelling mind and and allowed you. To go to the liquor liquor beverage store and purchase and, <laughs> and, liquor and, beverage and with the in, with the endorsement of all the members of the French Revolution who were present at the present at the event, we're able to acquire sufficient beverages for us to enjoy the enjoy the creation and dine on these chopped vegetables and seasoned hard buttered ninety degree bent bread. And everyone, everyone there was singing butter it up, butter it up, butter it up, butter it up. <laughs> also happy birthday. <laughs> Many thanks. All right. Oh my God. Good one. Thank you, Leviticus. Thank you, Leviticus. Well, I do have a, a question that I almost laughed out loud when I saw it, from BC twenty fourteen, who donates twenty five dollars and would like to know why does every coin have your head on it with the letter E on your forehead? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. To that is tail. really good. <laughs> every coin. Every coin. So there it was. 
post invention of the guillotine. <laughs> <laughs> just hope the ten year old acquired drinks. <laughs> I, I just I just committed uh, committed uh, the horrible crime of bringing uh, the one hundredth underage person alcoholic beverages in my village. Um, <laughs> wow. And I was on I was on the run. I was on the run. Uh, I kept going village to village, but the word kept spreading so quickly. They called him the uh, uh, underage alcohol guy. <laughs> that was my name. That was my dad's name. I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, now, as, as I recall, those those stories became became twisted as time went on. What was the what would you say is the craziest one that you heard? Um. That, I, uh, oh yeah, I, I do remember that. I uh, went to one town and they thought uh, that I brought underage people absinthe. <laughs> that was pretty bad. Um, nice save. <laughs> uh, way more common in uh, the 18th century. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> So the FBI was after me, and uh, I was going village to village to village to village, and uh, eventually I started out running them. I was feeling pretty good. Until I came to the town that you're from, Supermarket. I remember this very, very specifically, that it was you. And you said, you're the man who gave my seven-year-old nephew all that Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> Refresh my memory. What's, what's the town that Supermarket's from again? Uh, Supermarketville. <laughs> he was the kid. Like, yeah. Get away again, Supermarketville. <laughs> Supermarket. Exactly. <laughs> Got me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> dang, I was hoping they wouldn't figure that out. So I tried. I tried to escape, but all of Supermarket's henchmen, the uh, Quickie Mart men. <laughs> I'm very proud of them. They all jumped on top of me. They held me down. I said, you'll never take me alive. I will bring alcohol to every, every person on this planet. And then, uh, of age. and then I remember there was Leviticus walking over to me with dead eyes. His <laughs> dead, dead alcoholic eyes. <laughs> What have you done to me, Johan? What have you At done to me? At such a young age, you have corrupted my innocent soul with the alcoholic beverages far more than I ever expected. Where so then, we? so then, he used oh. a bottle opener to pop off a Coors Light bottle, the, uh, the, yeah, which are in bottles, and uh, <laughs> chiseled the top of it. And he chiseled on my forehead. E for... Hey, stop giving me that <laughs> alcohol, dude. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> well, I, no, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't it also... They, they, they were bad at spelling in those times, so didn't it also stand for inebriator? Yes, inebriator. <laughs> exiled for inebriating. <laughs> and as, as, I, as I recall, they, uh, they, 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 they ascertained you to a, a specific title of Lord. Lord Inebriator. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Uh, let's get through these stories before the FBI comes and takes me away. <laughs> oh, God. Well, if, if I might interject, well, didn't, didn't it occur that... Didn't, didn't it occur that once you, you were caught and stopped giving children the, the, the alcohol, that they... That the, the, uh, all the townsfolk realized just how annoying children were yeah, sober. And that's why they celebrated you by putting you on a coin with your newfound E on your forehead. Of course, well, the coin is given out to everyone who goes through uh, the 18th century uh, D.A.R.E. program, where uh, you learn that it's very, very bad to be giving children alcohol. Ah, uh, yes, E.E., -E, Alcohol's Anonymous. Right. right. The e alcohol's and Dare. And Anonymous? <laughs> Yikes! The Ian wow. Dare is uh, is for inebriator. It's named after me. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> did you oh, go on. King King Lord Supermarket. <laughs> A question from Radaman Eight Thousand. 
How did you discover the lost kingdom of Chattanooga and loot its legendary treasures? Oh, God, I haven't thought about that in ages. <laughs> I was very young then, so I would... You know, this is back when Mom was still around. We were hanging out at home one day, watching the usual on TV. Um, what was that show called? <laughs> Fixer, Fixer Upper and Chopped were both on. We kind of alternated between those two anyway. So it was the window wide open. It's a beautiful day. Um... 75 degrees, sunny, and we see this guy, and I know this isn't going to seem like it's relevant, but I'll, it'll work its way back around. So we see one of our neighbors walking across the parking lot, and when you look out our window, you can see the dumpster from, like, our window. So, like, we see people all the time walking out there to take the trash out. We see this one guy, he, um, he's walking along, he's going to the dumpster, and he's holding something under his shirt, and we're like... Why is he holding something under his shirt? I don't know. He walks down to the dumpster, pulls whatever it is out from under his shirt, and throws it in the dumpster, and then he walks back to his apartment. And we're like, okay. <laughs> he just threw something away. He obviously didn't want people to see what it was. So anyway, you know, we didn't think much of it. You know, We went back to watching TV, and about five minutes later, the same guy comes by again with something under his shirt. <laughs> and he goes, and he throws it in the dumpster. And well, I, mean, um, I, don't, I mean, I don't mean to interject, but at that point, at that point in the day, didn't the the hit sitcom that 1670s show come on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I believe it did. She didn't like watching that because she wasn't a big fan of uh, Leonard von Beethoven. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, oh well. Does that mean? Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh well. I liked him, but. Oh, <laughs> we, we never really agreed on music tastes. Anyway, this goes on. This happens like ten times. He, this guy literally makes ten trips out in the dumpster, holding some under shirt. So we're both curious, like, what is he throwing away what, that he doesn't want anybody to see? So that night, uh, she had gone to bed. I was still up. I just couldn't sleep. So I went out to the dumpster myself, and it's like twelve thirty in the morning. I get out there, and I look inside, and I see ten little bags in there. And so I pull one of them out, because I'm like, I'm not going to stand out here for very long. I don't want anybody to see what I'm doing, right? So uh, I pull one out, I take it back to the apartment, and I open it up. There's a bunch of little comp books inside, and they each have a name on them. And they're all girls' names. And I'm like, oh, God, is this what he didn't want people to see? And, I mean, this is kind of serious, you know, because... <laughs> I mean, you think this stuff didn't happen back then, but man, it was, oh I don't know, man. Anyway, oh boy. Well, anyway. <laughs> okay, so, so I went online, and I started Google. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know what you're thinking. We didn't have the internet back then, right? Actually, we did. They just you, didn't you, tell you us were, about it. You were at King Lords, so you could afford such luxuries. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> internet. That too. King Supermarket. It was the. Um, it must have been know. a lot smaller. Than <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, we didn't have monitors. We had to use rocks, <laughs> and we carved things into them, and that's. What? And you know, and then we buried them. He threw them at a surf to deliver to other people. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so you know, so I send this message out with all these girls' names. Like, does anybody know what all these might have in common? Like, is there a group? Of them or something. So anyway, a, a couple days later, I get a message back. Hold on a second. A couple days later, what was your upload rate like in the 18th oh, um, century? How did you measure that? Let me see. Yeah, it, it was about four <laughs> bytes per uh, month. <laughs> no, five. Five. It was five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It used to be 1,200 serfs per day. Not but all I was five. sending was names. You know, <laughs> names are like certain letters. In fact, is not is that not where Surf the Internet came from? Oh, <laughs> uh, well. Surf the web. <laughs> I think you might be right. I don't know. <laughs> I had heard about here. that. <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah, I get a message back, and it turns out that all these names are actually the daughters of someone who lives across the sea. And I'm like, okay, great. So our neighbors kidnapped their daughters, and he has them hidden in his apartment somewhere. Again. That's what's going on. 
Because I tried opening the comic books to read what was inside. They were all like little journals. And they were saying, oh, God, I've been captured. I'm trapped in this guy's apartment. How do I get out of here? And that's why he was thrown away, because he didn't want anybody to know, you know that he was hiding girls in his apartment. I mean, this guy was crazy. I don't know. He was always a little weird. But anyway, so back to the original story here. It turns out that the parents lived in Chattanooga. And so we decided to make a road trip. So we headed down there. Me and Mom both did. And we got there, and we picked up the girls, and we decided we kind of liked it there. So we said, well, why do we want to go back to old Ohio? You know, who wants to go back there? <laughs> so we stayed in Chattanooga, and we built our uh, village there, all Dragon Quest builder style. <laughs> and, um, and we lived happily ever after. Us and the girls. And, that's and, the, and the, the treasure was Chattanooga that they found. That they found. The yes, it was, was totally. Them all along. Exactly. And oh that's how God. chatting was invented. Oh my and God. That's how the internet oh chatting God. started in Chattanooga. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to put one final straw poll up. So many and modern and conveniences in the supermarket. 18th century. Oh, God. <laughs> the winner will be... The winner will be uplifted, vocally. Oh, Tell them they're great. God. Is this going to be the third time you die at this thing? <laughs> oh my god. Who's the winner and why is it 10? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh. Four, 4 BPM, that is bites per month. <laughs> bites per month. Well, I'd already planned out that story. Part of it's actually true. <laughs> I'm serious. Me and Mom were sitting there one day and we saw a guy rock out of the dumpster holding stuff under his shirt. And putting it in the dumpster where we never found out what it was. Okay, I was going to say, if any more of that was true, did you yeah. call the police? <laughs> uh, I mean, he only went like three times. But we yeah. found we found the girls and set them free. We didn't really tell anybody. We just let yeah, them go. You know. Anyway, our internet was bad back then. <laughs> it's Jules. 166 votes, it's Jules. Still better than Josh. Yeah. Oh. Second, with 308 votes, it's Carlos. 308 votes, Carlos. First, with 800 yes. What? Yep. 800 votes! 63% is him. 63% You guys yeah. are way too sweet. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Good All right, story. ladies and gentlemen, that uh, that is it for Baron I was, Munchausen. I was expecting uh, thanks, to fail massively. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> what is next? What is our next uh, uh, animal, animal Crossing, Crossing. Animal Crossing, Festival. Amiibo Festival. So stay Amiibo tuned for festival. that. Amiibo Festival. Don't even know what that game is. I brought some Amiibos. It's, it's Mario Party with Amiibos and no minigames. That's not a game, Tom. <laughs> but it is, and it's coming up right next. <laughs> you better believe it.